Our gospel message is Mrs. Miller. Now we're on. It's from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. We can find that on 1591. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men whom his favor, on whom his favor, favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of God for the people. Thanks be to God. God. Well, I have just enough breath to get through this. God has got more than enough. <laughs> I'm going to have more than enough, I know. Well, Christmas has come and gone for another year. Did you get everything you wanted? I hope that you got everything you needed, more so than wanted, because our wants sometimes end up being nothing after Christmas because we forget all about them. That's not what we wanted in the first place. Mm -hmm. But I ask you, where is it written that we only celebrate Jesus for one day or two? Let's not forget Easter. Jesus is to be celebrated each and every day of the year. I think that some or all of us forget this from time to time. Amen. We do come on Sunday. Oh yeah, there's Christmas and Easter too. What about the other 50 weeks of the year? Just a few days ago, we celebrated the birth of Jesus, which took place about 2,000 years ago. The parents of Jesus had to travel to a little town of Bethlehem to be counted in the census. I'm certainly glad that we don't have to travel to be counted today. We just go out to the mailbox, get the mail, and then fill out the form and return it. There was no Christmas to celebrate when Jesus was born, as he became Christmas for us in the future. The Jews do not celebrate his birth unless you're talking about Messianic Jews, as Jews for the people like us, those are called Gentiles. <clears throat> Why do they have Hanukkah, which began about 165 BC? It is known as the Festival of Lights and concerns the rededication of the temple in Jerusalem by the Maccabees. This is an eight day celebration where a candle or oil is lit. In, in a menorah, which is sort of like a candelabra. The oil that the Maccabees found was only enough for one night, but through a miracle, it lasted for eight days and eight nights. That is why Hanukkah is celebrated for eight days. The reason for the Hanukkah gifts is celebrated for eight days is that the American Jews took over some of our Christmas in the form of gifts only. 
The gifts start out small and become bigger and better each night. It seems something like our giving of gifts at Christmas. We generally give the smallest leading up to the greatest gift that we have. Maybe one or more. New car, boat, plane, train. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> wish upon a star. That won't work either. A Jewish friend of mine, Sam, went shopping in the mall. Actually, one of my friends, that's just the way I started the story. When he meets his friend Abe outside the jewelers, Sam notices that he has a small gift wrapped up in his, in, in his hand. So what have you bought, Abe? Sam asks. Well, Hanukkah begins soon. Abe replies, and when I asked my Rivka this morning what she wants, she said, Oh, I don't know, dear. Just give me something with a lot of diamonds in it. So what did you get here? Sam asked. Abe smiles. I got her a deck of cards. <laughs> <laughs> well, enough about Hanukkah. Let's look again at the real reason for the season. Jesus came to us as a little baby lying in a manger in the town of Bethlehem, in a stable. Joseph could find no other room for them than the stable, as all the rooms were taken. But I put another possibility in there. Because of the culture at that time, the birth of Jesus would have had Mary been deemed unclean. And anyone who was around her at that time would also have been unclean. But that's not what the Bible says, so we'll go with what the Bible says. The celebration of the birth of Jesus apparently stems from the time of a pagan holiday. We do not know exactly when Jesus was born, the date, or the season. But this morning, in Jerusalem, not Bethlehem, at 6 a.m. our time, it was 51 degrees, so they get a little better weather than we do for Christmas. After Jesus was born, Mary and Joseph waited eight days before he was taken to Simeon, who was in the temple, waiting for him. Simeon did what was supposed to be done by the law, and that is also when he received the name Jesus although he had been named previously. That was also a custom during that time to name their sons or daughters eight days after they were born. He also met a prophetess named Anna. After all that was done, after all was done and was required, Joseph packed up and headed back to his hometown of Nazareth. The Bible tells us that the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. The wise men came to visit Jesus. Was he a baby, or was he two years old? Why did these wise men bring these three certain gifts? And how many of them were there? Where did they come from? These and other questions can be answered with a simple, I don't know. <laughs> The wise men did come to visit, of that we are certain. The age of two would fit for their arrival, as at that time Herod was afraid he would lose his position as a king. Ordered all the firstborn sons of two years old or less to be killed. This would fit with that story, except if that's the case, why would Joseph, Mary, and Jesus still be living in a stable? And either Jesus was a small child, for the manger was very big. However, the Bible tells us that they had departed for Nazareth. An angel came to Joseph in the night and told him to get Mary and the child ready and go on to Egypt <coughs> until it was safe for them to return. We sing about three wise men because there were three gifts given to Jesus. There may have been one or two or twenty wise men. We don't know. And what about these gifts? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Certainly something for a young child or a baby to play with. They were not suited for a baby or a child of two. 
The gold could have been used to live on while in Egypt, or they could have been burial gifts for a king, which also was the custom at that time. We know that Jesus was, is, and always will be the king of kings. Amen. So were these, in fact, burial gifts for a king? After all, Jesus did come to die for us. Just as Mary pondered all these and other things in her heart, we are also left to ponder as well. How's your pondering? Here's something else to ponder. Joseph, Mary, and Jesus went to Bethlehem every year as was their custom. They certainly would have traveled with friends, family, or a caravan for safety reasons. Anyhow, they went up when Jesus was 12 years old. When his family left with the rest of the relatives, Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. It took Mary and Joseph until that evening to find that he was nowhere to be found, and they left to seek him in Bethlehem. It took another two days for them to find him. When they found him, he was in the synagogue. If that were in today's society, they would have taken Jesus away from Mary and Joseph and placed him in a foster home. <laughs> and that foster home was probably run by Satan and his family. And they would keep telling him, you ain't the Messiah. <laughs> Meanwhile, we are most fortunate that Jesus was born and lived during the time period that he was. Let's look at the times of Jesus from 13 to 30 years of age. The Bible tells us, oh, I hope you enjoyed that. As you see, there is nothing written about Jesus from the time he was in the synagogue until he showed up on the Jordan River to get baptized at 30 years of age. Before Jesus could do any of these things, he went to the Jordan River to be baptized by John, who was baptizing people for the repentance of their sins. Where did Jesus come from? John saw him and replies, Behold the Lamb of God! Who told John that Jesus was the Lamb of God? And why was Jesus walking alongside the Jordan River at that time? The Father intervened during these events as well as others. Jesus did get baptized that day by John the baptizer, and after the dove had landed upon him and took him out into the wilderness where he stayed for 40 days being tempted by Satan. After 40 days in the wilderness, Jesus through the Spirit is found in Galilee, teaching in the synagogues where everyone was praising him. Jesus then goes to Nazareth and on the Sabbath, we find him again in the synagogue, where he asks for the scroll of Isaiah. He stands, unrolls the scroll, and begins to read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Jesus then rolls up the scroll, hands it back to the attendant, and sits down. He began with this statement, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. This was not disrespectful on the part of Jesus to sit down, as that's the way they spoke at that time. Can't you just imagine everything going on at that time? Who does this young upstart think he is? Ain't he that carpenter's kin from down below the tracks? Just look at that long hair and beard. Where did he get those funny looking clothes he wears? Ah, a prophet is never welcome in his own hometown. After this, Jesus leaves and goes out to recruit the twelve who will become his disciples and apostles during the remainder of his ministry. Just how did Jesus walk alongside the lake and tell these guys to follow him so he would make them fishers of men? How about the tax collector? 
Sticky fingers, Judas. And the rest join in. We are told in the Old Testament scriptures from today's reading, there is nothing to attract us to him. Looks, mannerisms, tone of voice. He was certainly not the fair-haired Caucasian that we see in many pictures of him. God has again intervened on behalf of his only son. Jesus taught not only his disciples, but also the people he encountered. One time he even fed a whole bunch of people with a kid's sack lunch. Jesus actually did this material miracle on another occasion. Jesus also sent the disciples out two by two. Remember Noah's Ark? When he sent them out, he also gave them authority to perform certain signs and wonders. They probably were as excited as a kid in a candy store when they'd done these things. After almost three years, the synagogue leaders and the rest of the Jewish religious leaders were thoroughly fed up and wanted to put him to death. When the opportunity arose, they enlisted the help of Judas Iscariot for 30 pieces of silver, which was the going rate for a slave at that time, whereupon he would be betrayed when he went to pray after the Passover <coughs> meal, which we call the Last Supper. Jesus was not held in contempt of court because he opened not his mouth or said anything to his accusers. On the other hand, his accusers had a lot to say about him, enough so that they got him beaten, spit upon, hair pulled, crown of thorns mashed down upon his head. And if that wasn't enough, he was made to carry his cross out so that he could be crucified upon it. He then was then buried and rose to life on the third day. The scriptures today are from the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah, and the Bible verses are found in the New Testament book of Luke. When all is said and done, Jesus was not here long enough for anyone to really get to know him. He was around long enough to be born, live, teach, and give up his life to save us from sin and death. He gave us the opportunity to believe in him, sight unseen, save us from our sins, and by his grace, mercy, and love, give us eternal life. If you haven't read about Jesus, there is a book out that is full of love, war, romance, some sex, more wars, nonfiction, although some might differ with you. The book, of course, is the Holy Bible, and it's about Jesus, from cover to cover. 